this morning we're going to talk about <coughs> resonance and how we get at the interface between ourselves, our bodies, our consciousness in an expanded way. Lots of years ago, we just looked at water in the ocean. Isn't it pretty? It crashes. It's um, frothy. Isn't this grand? But after the microscope was invented, and droplets of water from the ocean were put on a slide and looked at, up came images of things living in the ocean we had no idea about. This is a Pluteus larva. This will give rise to a starfish or sea fish. It's a generalized kind of larva. But the ocean is teeming with it. And the colder the ocean, the farther north, the more biomass is there. Baby fish, baby this, baby that. Thick with life. And it only looks like water to us. So the invention of the microscope brought us an awareness of life and cells. And then in the 40s, someone decided to go from looking at things with light, going through lenses, to looking at things with electrons going through lenses. And the electrons had a much higher resolution, so we could see very small things. And lo and behold, here's an electron microscope, that's me, a long time ago. Here's one single human liver cell. So, it's been dyed so that you can see it electronically dyed. This is what the electron microscope sees, just black and white. There's no color in electrons. But they see things down to a few angstroms apart. The distance between hydrogen atoms in a helium molecule is about four or five angstroms. This microscope, if it's tuned really well, can see at five or six angstroms can magnify a million times. And so all of a sudden, a whole world opened up that no one had a clue about or an idea about. This is a very recent picture of the virus that causes bird flu. This is not just H1N1, this is H5N1. We can understand what's inside of us. We began to understand what we're made of as cells. Any one of us who's roughly six feet tall, that's not me, obviously, has a hundred trillion cells in us. You've got a thousand times more cells in you than all the stars in any of the nearest galaxies. So you are an amazing composite and being. If we look at ocean water with the electron microscope, we see exquisite structures. This is the home, one single cell makes for itself that lives in the ocean. It's a diatom. And often you brush your teeth with these things. Woohoo! So we move from this exquisite tiny world inside of us to the world of healing, to the world of blessing, to how do we affect our bodies? How do we affect life within us? in the very best way. There's a mystery and a magnificence in this body. The body is not trash. The body is absolutely incredible. And so is our consciousness. And so is the universe in which we live. This is a picture of the end of a nerve cell touching a T cell, which is a very important part of our immune system. The ability of one cell to touch another, to transmit information, is astonishing. And this is what it looks like when it does it. So things are not just sloshing around in you. Yeah, we're 80%, 90% water. But it doesn't mean we're sloshing. It means we're touching each other at a very profound, deep, important level. So at the interface of this touch 
within us, at the interface of our consciousness and of spirit, what's the experience like? For some of us, it's mashed up against the rocks. I'm going to pound the rocks with my intention. I'm going to pound the rocks with my quests. And then everything's going to work just fine. That hasn't worked very well for me. I don't know if it works for you. There's also the kind of metaphor of an ocean that is gentle, that laps against the beaches in the Bahamas, for example, at the ashram there. Just think about the metaphors and how you approach reaching your own spirituality, the depth inside of you. Do you fly over the tops of mountains? Do you soar in the heights of the universe? Where are you? And who guides us? Sages is part of the topic of this wonderful conference this year. Who is a sage? He's realized, or she has realized, the barrage of the world. That what we see here, interesting as it is, is still a mirage. That there is, in our separateness, individuality, the oneness of existence. And how do we get there? How do we work with that to stay healthy for healing? How do we evolve as we're in this journey? Stephen Lee says that it's like peeling back an onion. You peel back layer by layer by layer, and you find that inside, after the ego is gone, there's nothing. It's quiet, and it's everything. So if we get down to the level of atoms, these beautiful cells in us are made of molecules, ultimately of atoms, the sort of basic part of the universe. So an atom has neutrons, protons, and electrons. If this atom was the size of a grain of sand, its electron would be higher than the height of this 28-story hotel we're in. Grain of sand, like a proton, at the ground level, its electron is at the height of 28 stories at least. If that proton was the size of a golf ball, the electron would be 200 miles away. Now, because our atoms are so small, we don't realize that we're essentially made of beautiful, empty space. There's nothing much in there. That proton has a weight. It has a mass. It weighs this, one point, blah, 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 to the minus minus 27 kilograms. Doesn't weigh a lot. But this is what makes you, this is what gives you structure and substance that forms yourself. 